Good morning. Welcome to the March 29th edition of Advisory Live. We're powered by NASDAQ IR Insight, and I'm your host, Will Briganti. Joining me today from NASDAQ Advisory Services is Ian Sverkorski. He's a healthcare analyst here at NASDAQ Corporate Solutions. Ian, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, Will. Great Thanks. to have you on the program. So today we're going to talk about healthcare. So obviously we've seen sectors like technology pull back uh, of late uh, based on some big headlines. So how has the healthcare sector performed during this time? Sure. Well, healthcare names, particularly biotech, are, um, are also in a bit of a rough patch. We're seeing them on a, about a two and a half week slide now. Um, and fundamentals aside, there's um, some clear technical trends emerging mm -hmm. um, from this action. So most notably, the, the MBI, which is... The biotechnology index here at exactly, NASDAQ. Exactly. Yep. Um, it's fallen below the 200-day moving average, and, and we're also seeing um, the 20-day fall below the 50, which is also a, a pretty you know, sh signal a short-term bearish mm -hmm. uh, momentum. Um, so usually we'll see uh, that the MBI find support on the 200-day and then rebound. Um, right now we're kind of trading a li little bit below it and sideways. Um, so if there's some you know macro trends that could, that could pull the market lower, um, we might see 3,300 or 3,250 mm -hmm. as the next support level. Sure. And we're also seeing this um, aside from the MBI and the BTK, which is you know a smaller index, but biotech nonetheless um, falling below the 50-day and showing some similar price action. Okay. Thank you so much for that quick overview, Ian. Uh, let's talk um, specifics. So uh, there have to be some fundamental reasons why we're seeing a hit in other areas of healthcare over the last week, right? Absolutely. So uh, last Monday night, drug pricing came back into the arena. And I yes. know something that's been discussed here um, yeah. in, in the past. That's right. Um, and President that's Trump right. gave a speech in New Hampshire. Um, you know, but this time around, biotech wasn't as phased as it usually is. Um, instead, we saw the pharma supply chain names um, really take the brunt of the hit. Um, and, and that's because the, the new Health and Human Services Secretary mentioned that um, they might be looking at ways to minimize the discounts for these, um, these so-called middlemen yeah, or, the, yeah. or the PBMs. Um, I'd point out it's not all negative, though. Um, the, the administration's doing some things to speed up the approval process for, for generic drugs. Um, from the FDA, as well as looking to reduce out of cost, um, mm -hmm. out of pocket costs for for seniors. Um, so, although these changes might not be significant now, um, and, and I think they're largely cooked in, um, it's still an overhang that we're going to have to worry about. Okay. And my final question for you today, Ian, is obviously drug pricing remains in the headlines, uh, but the administration has also been pretty vocal, specifically on the opioid uh, epidemic here in the U.S. Any, any take on that? Exactly, and there was, there was some pretty <coughs> significant price movement um, within the specialty pharma names. Um, following the same speech last Monday, um, you know, President Trump mentioned that the federal government uh, might actually take some, some opioid-related litigation um, against these companies. Um, it's, it's something that the states have already done, um, but, you know, this might have some more bite since it is a, a midterm election year, and the um, both parties could come together on this because this is an easy one to to want to help and yeah, fix. It's it's across party lines, um, so it's something we're gonna have to wait and see. Yeah, and which uh, firm fundamentals led to most of the weakness on the announcement? Sure. So the, the spec pharma firms that we saw hit the hardest are the ones with um, you know the largest percent of sales within the opioid space, as well as um, a less diversified balance. Um, excuse me, less diversified um, portfolios of yeah. drugs, and then anytime you know you have a higher levered balance sheet, it, um, it does tend to create more weakness in this uncertainty. All right. Well, Ian, I really appreciate your take today on the healthcare sector. Thank you so much for breaking it down for us. My pleasure, Will. Great to have Thanks. you here. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this was Ian Sverkorski. He's a healthcare analyst here at NASDAQ Advisory Services. For more information on all of our healthcare sector solutions, uh, be sure to visit our website. That's at business.nasdaq.com. And as a quick reminder, the U.S. markets will be closed tomorrow for the Good Friday holiday. Uh, we wish you all a nice weekend, and we will be back to you with another edition of Advisory Live next Tuesday. Thanks so much, Ian. Good to have you on. My pleasure. All right, Take thank care. you very much. Have a great weekend.